Hello, everybody. Sitting out here in my prayer closet. I'm just thinking about what we've become. And, uh, you know, I believe that God is right now more than ever calling them calling the church to true repentance like I see these uh, I see these videos of all these people out on the streets you know on their knees repenting of their sins and uh, I do believe that that's that's the beginning to our call to repentance but let's take an let's take a look for a second at at what true repentance is you know the scripture says that to produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Um, what is the fruit that God is most interested in? You and I both know that it's people reconciled to Him. How do we do that? Well, it, it stands right in line with the Great Commission that Jesus gave us. The last thing that Jesus said to us before He left the earth, He said, Go therefore and make disciples of nations baptizing them into the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The one name. Jesus Christ. Teach them to do everything that I've taught you. So we see all of us now, the church is starting to think about repentance. Hear me on this, you guys. This is so important for us to grasp. See that the Bible says that we, uh, we nullify the words of God by our tradition, by our traditions. So how have we done that? Like how have, how have, we, how have we transferred into a, a culture of traditional church versus the true church, which was always the ones that were making disciples, the ones that were walking in God's power? I mean, what separates us from the rest of the world. I know lots of Christians that are good people. Morally great people. And that is important. You must be above reproach, the Bible says. So that when people talk bad about you, uh, it'll be known that it's that it's false. Those are false words. Um, but so, how are we so steeped in tradition? Like, where are those... You know, like, we... It says in the end days there'll be a powerful delusion. What is that powerful? What is a part of that powerful delusion? There are lots of powerful delusions out there. What is the what is one of those powerful delusions? Well, one of them is is our church model, our traditional church model. Jesus talks about how oh, I can't remember what is in it is it if it's Isaiah or Ezekiel or where where he's basically saying I hate all your show and pretense. Uh, you know all your all your uh, your Sabbath days and your uh, your special days, and he's basically saying like, you know, you're singing and all of that. He said it means nothing to me. It's worthless because you do not worship in spirit and truth. So many people don't know what it's like to be led by the Spirit or live in the Spirit. It's my constant struggle. My constant battle is to stay in the Spirit. Um, and in that battle, it's like being near to God or far from God. Now, how do we draw near to God? By producing fruit and keeping with repentance. It's our sin that separates us from God. So our traditional church model is all about show and pretense. Even though we don't feel that way, we don't feel like it's about show and pretense. We feel like it's honoring God and it's what we've learned and what we've been raised with. But if we go there and sing and praise God, then outside of that, how do we show true repentance? It's by, it's by standing with the, um, the Great Commission that Jesus gave us. It's, it's about making disciples, reconciling people to Jesus Christ, baptizing them, because in the baptism is where you're reconciled. It says it must be done to fulfill all righteousness. You cannot fulfill righteousness without baptism. When you get baptized, then you realize there's a key here that changes your heart, changes who you are, changes your personality, changes 
your direction, all of those things. Now, this whole lifestyle that I'm living and that I'm pressing into of, of discipleship and, and making disciples and walking in God's power, it's not just for me. So many people think, well, Art, you have a call on your life. And, and yeah, of course I do. But we all have a call on our life. And it's simple. To make disciples of nations. The, the Word of God says the same thing to you as it does to me. And God is no favorite. He doesn't play favorites. Anyone that would say yes, He would use. So what is true repentance, body of Christ? Keep ourselves unspotted by the world and its sinful desires and its lusts and all of those things. I mean, what are we working on? Big houses and nice cars and all that stuff like we're supposed to be citizens that are apart from this world i'm not saying you can't have some nice stuff i'm saying is that your motivation and are you seeking first the kingdom of god or are you building your own temples let's make disciples of, of nations guys you want true repentance you want to show god that we're repentant as a nation back to the foundation back to the great commission and back to walking in power. The only thing that separates you spiritually from the world is the fact that you walk in power. Healing the sick. Casting out devils. Those are all real things. You want to repent from your sins? Start doing those. Start producing fruit in keeping with repentance. I'm not telling you that the fruit is just being a good person. That's not, that's just a very small part of it. Very important part of it, but also a very small part of it. Jesus says, uh, forms of godliness, but deny the power. And in some, in some uh, descriptions it says, uh, or some versions it says, they will have forms of godliness, but deny the power that could make them holy. Because when you pursue to live apart from the world and in the power of God, it does some big stuff to you. This is why there's so many denominations out there, there's so many people out there who speak against walking in power. Because they know the commitment it will take. And they know the life change it will bring. And spiritually, it is a scary place to walk in. Because you know that you're going against so much tradition. You're going against so much, so much of what man thinks. Uh, don't believe me? Test it. Start stepping out in faith. You'll see very quickly. So I just want to remind you guys, true repentance is to walk like Christ. Nothing short of Him. Don't ever sell yourself short. True repentance is to walk like Jesus. Don't ever look at anybody else and say, well, that guy's doing this or that guy's doing that. No, no, Jesus is always the model that we are to follow. Don't get your eyes off of him. Because as soon as you do, you start getting lukewarm and thinking and cutting yourself breaks and cutting yourself slack. There's no time for slack, guys. He's coming back and he's coming back for a pure bride. One who's got his eyes fixed on the sun, on the lamb, and one who's preparing herself in purity for his return. And that means calling things like they are. Jesus says to judge among ourselves so that we would not be judged. I hear so many people say to me, Art, you can't judge. I say, absolutely, we must judge amongst ourselves. You can't judge unbelievers, those who are not in the body. You don't judge them because they don't know. They have no clue. But for us who know God, we have no excuse. We must judge among ourselves. So God bless you. Return to walking like Christ. That's repentance, body Christ. God bless you, and I uh, hope you have an awesome day.